So old Netflix has been shoveling more and more content in your face since this lockdown, and one of those was the latest Spanish thriller, The Platform. But after the credits rolled, you're sitting there scratching your head. Did I miss something? What was the purpose of the facility? What the heck does that ending mean? Was it the end? Well, don't worry, because today we are going to break down all of the unanswered questions you have and try to explain them in the easiest way possible. Hello everyone, Jared here, and The Platform has been a movie that I've been meaning to watch for weeks now, and I'm almost kicking myself for waiting this long because it goes into some crazy things in this movie. But what about that ending? Well, don't worry because today we are going to break down everything in this film, get into the symbolism and parallels that this film brings up, and into, obviously, that obscure ending. So sit back and relax as we explain this latest Netflix movie, The Platform. Oh yeah, here it comes, here it comes. Ooh, I'm so hungry. So it is safe to say if you're watching this video, then you watched The Platform. If not, here's a quick refresher. The platform opens with our main character, Garang, as he awakens in what appears to be a concrete prison of sorts. Four walls, a tiny restroom area, the number 48 on the wall, and a huge hole in the middle of the room. And when I say huge, Garang had this reaction to it. Wow, what a hole. His roommate, Tiramisu, I mean Tremagasi, who states the word obviously a total of 57 times in the film, also fills him in on the lowdown. Where they are at is a tower-like structure consisting of an unknown amount of floors and a platform that travels from the top floor through all of the other floors, consisting of a bevy of food options, only stopping on each floor for roughly two minutes until it travels down to the next floor. And exposition done. Obviously, with them being on the 48th floor, food has been very much picked over, so there is little room to be picky, so lose those sassy pants. How hard is your job? How intelligent do you have to be to take a food order? Well, why not just hoard the food for later? Ha! The administration who runs the facility already thought of this in acting a childish, the floor is lava rule by either turning the temperature on that level up or down to fatal levels. Aw man, they thought of everything! It is also noted that every single month they are moved to a different level, either higher up the, no pun intended, food chain or lower. Oh yeah, they were also able to bring one personal item into this sinister facility. Trimagasi hilariously reveals that he brought the Samurai Plus self-sharpening knife, while Garang brought a copy of Don Quixote. <laughs> what a nerd. One day, a bloodied woman arrives on the platform with Trimagasi nonchalantly brushing off the fact it's Miharu, and every month she rides the platform from level to level looking for her lost child. Psh, you know, the old woman lost her child in a vertical prison-like structure story, blah, blah, blah. Don't mind her. Wait a minute, there's kids in this facility too? What follows is now an exchange of floors for the next few months, with the two then being demoted to level 171, the lowest Trimagasi had ever been, therefore tying up Garang and prepping to eat him. You know, because food doesn't get down that low, don't worry, he's not going to touch his genitals. Hashtag wiener love. Elevator lady Miharu then arrives on their level just in time, saving Garang, with him now getting his revenge, killing Trimagasi. Honestly, he was sort of a sh guy to begin with. Next level is 33, where Garang meets Imagiri, a middle-aged woman who was actually the administration official who interviewed him for the facility. She volunteered to be placed inside the facility, unaware of the actual horrors that it consisted of, spouting off some more exposition, as there is no more than 200 levels in this place, no one under the age of 16 should be in the facility, and there should, keyword here, be enough food for every single level, if everyone just portion controls. Summer is coming up, ladies, so it's time to get those beach bodies ready. Imagiri also mentions that the elevator lady volunteered for the facility, wanting to be famous, almost an Asian Marilyn Monroe, and also arrived alone. She never had a child. <laughs> Well, who the heck is she searching for then? Next month shifts the two to level 202, which neither thought was possible, resulting in Imagiri hanging herself. The month passes in a haze as Garang then wakes up on level six with his new cellmate, Baharat, and the two believe a revolution needs to happen. They plan to ride that some beach all the way down and then up again, only to make several shocking discoveries. Okay, now that we're all caught up on the platform, let's get into the closing portions of this film and break down all of the symbolism and theories that are really present in this film. Buckle up because this platform is about to go deep. You know what I mean. So Garang and Baharat are starting on their little revolution of riding the platform lower and lower using portion control to allow the food to make it all the way to the lowest levels of the facility, which is thought to be at 250 
at this point. This act of spontaneous sense of solidarity mentioned earlier by Imagiri sort of follows the theory she mentioned, except a bit more aggressively. You see, this sense of portion control is to be communicated amongst all levels so everyone is fed, or at least in theory. This was briefly mentioned from Imagiri earlier with Garang firing back stating that if solidarity emerged, they'd know how to prevent it from happening on the outside. They, meaning the administration running the facility, painting a sinister outlook on life, governments, corporations, and humanity in general. Okay, okay, enough of the bleak outlook at life and how everything is just awful right now. The two men make it deeper and deeper into the facility, riding atop the platform, aggressively yelling, using force to portion control until they come across Baharat's mentor. He exclaims they must use their words instead of force. Only this way will the lower levels understand the purpose of this revolution. Also, a message must be sent to the top. Not only can the two make it to the top, but rather a symbolic gesture needs to be taken place for these fancy pants snooty chefs and one percenters up top to understand. Find a delicate dish, in this case a panna cotta, and send that some beach back. That's right, they're going to do what every culinary chef's nightmare is and send food back to the kitchen. This will absolutely break the system. Side note, it actually more than likely would. Traveling deeper and deeper inside this some beach. Nice. Nice. The two soon realize that the platform does not stop at levels where the two cellmates are dead, therefore meaning that Garang's theory of 250 floors could be wrong. Traveling past 250, the two are badly injured, but continue their journey to the lowest of the low, level 333. They then stop, realizing a young child is hidden under the bed. A child, but no one under the age of 16, is meant to be in the facility, or at least according to Imagiri. How can this be? This has got to be the missing child of Miharu. Looking famished, they offer the panna cotta to the young girl, instead believing the girl will hold greater weight in message form than the fancy cake would to the higher up administration. Waiting for the platform to arrive the next day, Baharut has died from previous injuries and an injured and tired Garang, along with the young girl, make their way onto the platform, riding it down to the darkest depths of the facility. Now all they need to do is wait to ride that platform back up. However, we once again see a hallucination of Trimagasi, who tells Garang that the message, aka the girl, requires no bearer. Garang gets off the platform, walks away with Trimagasi, both turning to watch as the girl is transported upwards into the bright, blinding light. The end. Now the question is, what the heck does that mean? Did Garang die at the end? And what happens of the girl? Well, before we get into that, let's jump into the parallels and symbolism that the platform really holds overall. So it is fairly clear that the platform has a lot to say about society, government oversight, class status, and how we treat one another if we are quote unquote above someone else, even if we are below them, the time before. Even the opening of the film specifies that there are only three types of people, those above, those below, and those that fall. The platform is an intellectual jab at the current status of humanity interweaved with the notions of the sinister side of capitalism and how it doesn't work. Take into account the facility and its structures. The chefs and kitchen staff are in a luxury environment dealing with the delicately decorated foods that are prepared. They are the 1%, the ones with all of the gifts and power. And then the facility, as the levels go down lower and lower or higher in number, is the class divide and how careless and selfish people at the top are with resources carelessly overusing unable to even think about the ones that are below. Not only that, but the ones below them are grossly mistreated, leaving them with scraps of food, breaking glass in their food, or literally f***ing on them. Yeah, that happened. Just look. 
Even when we break it down and dissect individual pieces like cellmate behavior, Trimagasi is the prime example of someone who has misfortune, blaming those above him for the mistreatment of his life. Like the story of him quote unquote, accidentally killing someone when he threw his TV out of the window and not taking blame for that. But when the tables are turned and he is given some sort of power or resources, they are again grossly abused, treating those physically below him like trash. Even though the next month, he could be swapped in their position just like that. Tremagasi is the embodiment of this type of person, but can also be used to describe government officials in the same way. They promise time and time again Again, that your interests are at the forefront, but once they gain any sort of power, those promises fall by the wayside. By the wayside. And it's just another corrupt, power-hungry official chomping off what they can to survive. And if we do a quick look at some of the other people in the facility, you can see that the capitalistic practice of tangible goods that somehow means that you have worth or wealth is comically portrayed in many cellmates. If we remember back, each person was allowed to bring one personal item into the facility. Sure, some people brought weapons to protect themselves, but what about those ass? I mean, someone brought a surfboard, someone brought a children's swimming pool, I mean, a pool party would be fun, and someone brought cash. What the hell are you going to use any of these personal items for in this closed off facility? Instead, these people are holding on to the tangible goods that we are ingrained to crave and hold on to, even though they provide no benefit in a time of need. This is even closely resembled to when Trimagasi mentioned that his knife story at the beginning of the film essentially tackling individual greed. Even on the administration side of things, let's take a look at Imagiri and what she was told. Obviously, she volunteered for the facility because of life-threatening conditions, but she didn't expect it to be as bad as it was. And what she was told was a complete lie. There were more than 200 levels, the food probably would never have been enough for all of the people, and there was someone under the age of 16, meaning that all of the people working for the administration were actually working for something that was inherently corrupt or unjust, basically screaming ignorance from everyone in the administration, which can be paralleled to many or almost all governments and officials. So capitalism and failures of humanity in the form of social class and selfishness when it comes to one's own worth, greed, and self-interest, that is what the platform is trying to tell us overall, but let's get into the meaning of the ending as it ties in with capitalism along with some other fun theories. The very end of the film sees Garang getting the girl to the lowest levels of the facility, only then to allow her to ride the platform all the way up to the top, sending a message to the higher up officials, which in turn will reveal corruption or mistreatment in some form and topple the administration. Garang in this case is the current generation of people. He embodies how everyone is living and dealing with the corrupt in power and their no hope of change. The young girl is the embodiment of the next generation, a generation that needs to be taught this is wrong and can stand up for change and live out a different sort of existence. She is the hope for change, the hope for something better, the hope for humanity. Because remember, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. However, there is a completely different way to look at the overall story and themes of the platform. This focuses more on the cellmates and characteristics they possess, along with the characteristics the facility possesses. Greng is brought into the facility simply out of nowhere. Sure, we saw his interview, but we know nothing else about his character, aside from his love of Don Quixote. And he is often inquisitive about the world and life inside the facility, identifying what is wrong and what is right, being labeled some sort of messiah a handful of times throughout the film. So in this case, Grain can be looked at as Jesus Christ being thrust into this world. On the other side of things, absolute evil, darkness, and sin is seen throughout the facility and how it consumes each of the inmates. And the belief of the seven deadly sins is in full force here in the facility. There is no doubt the displays of pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Some have more of a spotlight than others, but each veers its ugly head or is mentioned at least once. I mean, just listen. 
also there are 333 levels. Well, how the heck does the number 333 have anything to do with religion? It doesn't, but it is said that there are supposed to be two cellmates per floor. Therefore, if we do some long form multiplication, 333 times two equals <gasps> 666. That's right, not only do the seven deadly sins show up, but also 666, the number of the beast. So obviously the presence of the devil and hell is very much alive as well. But what of Garang and the girl at the end of the film? What does all of this symbolize? If we view Garang as the Messiah, he obviously follows the path of Jesus. Instead of being the bearer of the young girl, he instead sacrifices himself for her, which she symbolizes human beings and all of the sins that they have committed. Therefore sending her off into the bright new world, aka the platform launching her up into the bright lights. At the end of it all, Garang is dead. I know some people were confused whether he was or he wasn't, but a key element makes his fate clear. He once again sees hallucinations of Trimagasi at the very end of the film. The only other times throughout the film that those visions returned were when he was about to pass out from the sleeping gas, which in this case we can conclude that Garang has met his fate, passed on, and is now able to converse with Trimagasi because of his same fate. Plus, even more symbolism can be made by Mihiru and her riding the elevator from top down every single month. How is she always on the top? Well, Mihiru died a long time ago. She is stuck in purgatory and constantly floating and flowing between level zero or heaven and the depths of the pit, aka hell. To get out of this nightmare, she must find her lost child, but this never comes to be, forcing her to go along the same path every day, week, or month. As you can see, the platform is one big allegory for the religious stories many were taught at a young age and the religion they still practice today. Or it's just a giant vertical prison with a hole down the middle connected to an accredited culinary school conducting social experiments for the benefit of the administration with a light of hope at the end of it all. I mean, either or. So that is it, a Netflix Spanish thriller that really conjures up a lot more questions than answers causing you to watch this video. What did you guys think of that ending? Did you like the religious aspects or more of the capitalism type stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways though, as always, thank you so much for watching. Watch some more videos up there or right over there, you know, brand new content every single week here on the J Buck Studios channel. Probably another one of these ending explained poorly so will come next week, otherwise, Tuesday nights, a live J Buck, live on my channel. Movie news, sketches, all sorts of fun stuff. Check that out. Follow all of my social media. Like this video. Subscribe to the J Buck Studios channel. And until next time, we'll see you later.